Okay, in this video I want to talk about finding vertical asymptotes of rational functions. And the thing you need to remember about vertical asymptotes, to find them, you're basically trying to figure out what values of x give you 0 in the denominator of the fraction of your rational function, but you don't want um, 0 to occur in the numerator. If you do get 0 over 0, it just means you have a hole in the graph. So there is a discontinuity there, but it's not going to be one of these infinite discontinuities. So I've got a, a few examples here um, on the right and the bottom. Um, let's look at the graph here in the top left for a second. So here I've graphed the function 1 over x minus 2. And notice if you plug in the value, um, if you plug in x equals 2 into the denominator, well, you'll certainly get 0 in the denominator, but we don't get 0 in the numerator. So we're getting 1 over 0. And again, as long as you're getting something non-zero over 0, that means you have, for a rational function, you're going to have a vertical asymptote. So here's the line x equals 2. We've dashed it. That's going to be our vertical asymptote. And remember, a vertical asymptote, all that is is it's an infinite discontinuity. It's the place where the graph either spikes off to negative infinity. You know, it could have went to positive infinity. Um, on the right side, this particular graph goes to positive infinity. It could have went to negative infinity as well. It just depends, obviously, on the function that you have. But that's the idea. We're just picking out kind of these places where the graph spikes off to either positive infinity or negative infinity. So here I've got four examples. Let's just find the vertical asymptotes, if there are um, vertical asymptotes for, for each example. So all I do for these, um, so maybe let's look at number, or let's look at a here real quick. Um, 5 over x squared minus 9. All I do is first I just set the denominator equal to 0 and solve that. You know, this is going to be the tedious part of finding vertical asymptotes is, you know, depending on what's on the denominator, you may have to use different techniques. Um, here I just have linear equation or linear functions and quadratics, so they won't be too bad. Um, we could either factor this or we could use the square root property. I could add 9 to both sides. I could take the square root of both sides, but remember when I take the square root, I have to add on positive and negative. Um, and if you take the square root of 9, well, that's simply going to give us positive and negative 3. And at this point, to me, these are kind of the potential um, vertical asymptotes. I have to check that if I plug these values of x in, I don't get 0 in the numerator. Well, there's not even any x's in the numerator here, so um, certainly I'm not going to get 0 on the top. So these would be my vertical asymptotes. We would have x equals 3 and x equals negative 3 as our vertical asymptotes. Okay, so in a different video too, I'm actually going to graph rational functions. So I don't want to get into the graphing here just yet, just talking about how you actually find them. Okay, so that takes care of A. Um, let's look at the next one. Again, pretty simple examples here, just trying to give you the idea of, of you know, what you need to do algebraically. So x minus 1 on top, x minus 4 on the bottom. So again, I set the bottom equal to 0. And then I have to solve that corresponding equation. Um, again, here this one's pretty easy, just a linear, um, a linear equation. So all we have to do is add 4 to both sides. And we'll get x equals 4. So again, that's kind of my potential vertical asymptote. Um, notice if I plug it back into the original function, if I evaluate g of 4, well, in the numerator, we'll get 4 minus 1, which is 3. On the bottom, we get 0. We get something non-zero over 0. That means that this line, x equals 4, is a vertical asymptote. OK, so let's go to part C here. OK, same thing. Um, we've got x minus 2 over x squared plus x minus 6. Same thing, I'm just going to set the denominator equal to 0 and try to solve that equation. So x squared plus x minus 6 
Well, again, this is a quadratic. We could use the quadratic formula. Um, I think this factors. So we're going to need an x and an x to get x squared. Remember, we need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add up to positive 1. Well, I think, uh, how about positive 3 and negative 2? Well, if we set each piece equal to 0, um, we'll simply get x equals negative 3. And if we set the other piece equal to 0, the other factor, we'll simply get x equals 2. So these are my potential um, vertical asymptotes. Again, I need to check and plug each one in. Well, notice certainly if you plug in, um, if you plug in negative 3, well, on the bottom we said that gives you 0 out. That's what we just solved over there for. If you plug negative 3 into the top, you get negative 5 over 0. That's something non-zero over 0. So x equals negative 3 is a vertical asymptote. But notice for sure if you plug in um, 2 into our function, well, then we get 2 minus 2. Again, we know for sure it gives you 0 on the bottom. That's what we just figured out. Well, here you get 0 over 0. So that means the line associated with x equals 2 is not a vertical asymptote. But again, what it means is you're going to have a hole in the graph at the x-coordinate of 2. That's what's going on if you were to graph it. Okay, So again, I think most people, they forget to do this. They remember it has something to do with the denominator being 0, but they forget to make sure that the numerator is not 0. Okay, So, so for this function, x minus 2 over x squared plus x minus 6, um, we'll just have one vertical asymptote and one hole in the graph. So last but not least, let's do um, our last function here, p of x for Patrick, 3x minus 7 over x squared plus 1. Well, again, I'm trying to find any vertical asymptotes. I set the denominator equal to 0. Well, we could use the square root property again and subtract 1 from both sides. But now if I try to take um, the square root of a negative number, um, we could resort to imaginary numbers, but that's, what, that's not what we want. We're going to use real numbers here. So this is not a real number. And that tells us that our original equation, x squared plus 1, has no solutions. And all that means is we've got a rational function that has no um, vertical asymptotes. Okay, so again, just illustrating that not all rational functions have to have vertical asymptotes. Okay, um, I hope these examples make some sense for, for, for finding rational functions, uh, the vertical asymptotes of rational functions. This is really all you have to do. Um, you know, obviously, if the thing in the denominator is really, really complicated, solving this equation is going to be really, really complicated. But, you know, in a typical algebra class or pre-cal class or even calculus class, I don't think you, you, you really shouldn't see anything too crazy. So, all right, I hope this helps you out out there. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to post them.